the race and post cast in association with Paddy Power. They prize support UK and Irish racing the night before. A warm welcome along to the Racing Post Weekend Review Postcast. I'm Bruce Millington and I'm joined this week by Nick Watts in the studio and on the line we've got Tom Siegel as well as from Paddy Power, Tom Nugent. Well, we're going to look back on York, see what it all means uh, in terms of anti-post, whether we've got anything we can suss for you for your horse tracker, Irish Champions Weekend, the Ledger, the Ark and even the Guineas. It's a real forward-looking show this because... Obviously, York is always the midsummer highlight. And Tom Siegel, first of all, shock horror. The headline is that you are not going to have your annual slag off of York because the going was all over the place. So you were quite impressed. I was. I liked York this 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 uh, this year, Bruce. I thought it was. You know, the ground was excellent. The right horses were winning. The top horses were there. I really enjoyed it from start to finish. Could have done with a few less seconds, but you know, I, I thought it was a great meeting. Now, the bookies didn't enjoy it, Tom Nugent, did they? Now, this is becoming a bit of a trend, isn't it? All these big festivals. Cheltenham, you did your absolute bollocks, didn't you? You did it. In, where else? Glorious it's, Goodwood was no it, good for you, was a, it? It's a horrible recurring nightmare, Bruce, but uh, we, we, we'll get through it, please, God. As long as the punters have a few bobs to come back to us, we'll be all right. But we're right. It, it was a properly bad week again. It's on the hot, hot on the hills of a, a gory Goodwood, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it is literally just a, a recurring nightmare. It's, it's a constant kicking, but, and these big festivals, seem to be everything is under the spotlight these days the punters miss nothing uh, so we'll just have to power through I suppose Nick Watts can you put your finger on why it is that punters are you know that normally the bookies will get a 20 to 1 and a 33 to 1 shot to dig them out of trouble but it just doesn't happen does it you just follow the fabs these days don't you it seems to be the way, doesn't it? But I, I think the going had quite a lot to do with it at York, definitely. Like you said, it can be a bit inconsistent up there, but this, this year it wasn't. Um, we had a little drop of rain on Friday, which allowed Mecca's Angel to run. But, um, yeah, I think it was, fair, it was kind of uniform and consistent, and that produces good results, I think. Did you enjoy it, Nick? Yeah, I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, I, I thought Mecca's Angel on Friday was fantastic. Which you know, great. right back to her best, and she blitzed Lomato. Uh, you know, when she just gets that little bit of juice in the ground as she got on the York on Friday, she's devastating. I think sometimes, you know, when you get these last-minute scares about will they run or won't they, you think, oh, come on, just run the bloody thing. But I think that was kind of fair enough. Don't you, Tom Siegel? I think that, you know... He took his time. He kept over and informed. I think he called it just right, don't you? Yeah, I thought there was no problem with that. I mean, look, I thought she's a brilliant filly, isn't she? I mean, I thought, you know, she was point naught, point eight outside. I thought I'd never see a horse run as fast as Deja in all my life. And a bit of rain, she nearly did it. I mean, she must be some special filly, Bruce. I don't think I've seen a faster one myself. Well, just imagine if she had been pulled out. Think what we'd be saying about Limato exactly. now. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Quickly, before we get really stuck into York, let's just have a quick touchback on the Olympics because it was it was damn good. I went into it with fairly low expectations, as always with these things. It turned out to be pretty good, didn't it? Have we got an Olympic highlight, chaps? We'll start with you, Tom Nugent. Well, in an Irish context, the uh, the, the rowers, the, well, the rowers, Gary and Paula Donovan from Skibbereen have been they've been fantastic. Um, they've their some of their interviews have just been absolutely amazing. They've gone viral in uh, in in Ireland as well. Of course, Annalise Murphy as well in the sailing won it won a silver medal. But it's uh, it's been a, it's been an unusual Olympics from an Irish perspective. Were people punting on it? Yeah, we did a bit of trade over it. It's always hard to get people interested in table tennis, but uh, they they do uh, they do come for come for the big events, especially when there's a bit of an Irish interest. We'd always see a bit of business for it. Tom Siegel, I know you love your Olympics, don't you? What would you think the highlight was? Well, like you, Bruce, I've been away for a bit of it. So watching, yeah, I think you were saying you were in Greece, so watching watching lots of wrestling and lots I watch of... it on Greek TV. And if you want to know anything <laughs> about water polo or wrestling, I am your man. But what did you make of well, it? Well, I watched a lot of uh, what was it, Taekwondo, because the French were pretty good at that. Because I was in France, I liked. Listen, it was great, wasn't it? I liked the personally. I liked the gymnastics best. Bruce thought that lad. I can't. Max Whitlock it was fantastic. I thought it was really good to you know we we we. We're used to winning at cycling and rowing and all those power sports and, you know, Mo Farah and the boys. But we're not usually that good at the sort of arty, farty stuff. But the lad who did the gymnastics was uh, was incredible. I thought I was really Funny good. you say that because I actually got Finney. He might be the value in sports personality. Yeah. Obviously, the Olympic Games is just a, a warm-up and a rehearsal for, for the big one, which is sports personality. Um, <laughs> have you, Tom, let's test how fast your fingers are. Have you got a latest show on, on sports personality from Paddy Pad? Because like I say, I think Murray will probably win it. But I just looked at the price and I thought that... Um, I thought the boy Whitlock might be quite interesting. While you're digging them out, let's get Nick Watts' Olympic highlight. 
Oh, it was three, Bruce. Women's hockey. Thought G- Team GB fantastic. Such together. They were lucky. Come off it. Tell it as it is. They were ridiculously <laughs> lucky. They were totally <laughs> outplayed. No, it's, it's true British grit there. Absolute travesty. No, no, no. no. Um, Justin Rose and the golf. That was a su- surprise Good, success. Yeah. The golf. That was fantastic. Rags to riches story there. Bloke with <laughs> yeah. about 25 million <laughs> exactly. in the bank. Wins gold, yeah. No, but he really bought into it, didn't he? And, he did, uh, And yeah. Rory McIlroy must be, you know, I, I think they must be kicking themselves, those guys that didn't bother. I, you know, showed what it meant to Justin Rose. And the other highlight, this is one for you, actually. Um, the cycling road races. Oh, that descent was brutal, oh, wasn't it? The, the, terrible. The girl who fell I down. I thought she died. Oh, Honestly, I awful. thought she'd broken her neck. That was horrific, That was too it? much, wasn't it? That was, that was awful. That seems like ages ago, that, doesn't it? Yeah, it was mm-hmm. the first weekend. And but... we ought to mention, obviously, the boy Skelton. He was terrific, wasn't he? Nick Skelton. That was fantastic, that, wasn't it? 58 yeah. years old and lovely stuff. Yeah, we've got to mention the two uh, horsey people. The old horse dancing. Strictly come dancing for that horse, isn't it? Vallegro, or whatever it's Not called. Not really thought... my thing, that, I must say. Uh, no, but I thought she's, she's quite, takes a lot. I worked to do that, I would imagine. Of course it does. Do you think they enjoy it, Nick? Yeah, no, I'm sure they do, yeah. Well, yeah. not the riders, the horses. Yeah, no, yeah. I think How so. do you get them to do it? Like, say that thing where the music gets all jaunty and they start <laughs> lifting their feet. How do you actually get a horse to do that? <laughs> I, I wouldn't know. Pass. I, Come I, I on, Roxy. Come on, You're a son of a soil. Yeah, you know exactly. About these things. Yeah, I know. Well, You'll well, get one I'm, of your cows to do it, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just years and years of practice, isn't it? You know, it's it's, it's, so. um, you know, they get it in the end. But, uh, yeah, no, it's extraordinary stuff. Right, Tom, we've been very lenient on you. I hope you've yeah, got those sports personality prices. I've got an incredible amount of time there. I've actually been waiting for you to wrap it <laughs> okay. up. So it's An- Andy Murray at the top of the sports personality of the year, betting at 11 to 10. Next in is Mo Farr at 5 to 2. Laura Trott at 11 to 2. Jason Kenny at 9 to 1. Max Whitlock at 12 to 1. And it's 20s bar those. Any fancies there, Nick? I, I'd agree with you. I, I don't think Murray can win it again. We've got more sportsmen than just Andy Murray. I don't think they want to give it to him three times. It's, it's about time somebody else won it. You can so. have a bit of Justin Rose there at 66 to 1. Nick. No it's hope. Awesome. Cyclist, that's the cyclist, no hope. That's the one sport that always does badly in sports personalities, yeah. golf. He, he's, he's a million. He's got no chance. Whatsoever. I thought Whitlock might, be, might have half a chance. Look, let's get back to the racing because that's what everyone's tuned in for. A few uh, Bon Mott and some... Uh, some rapier like insight from the boys so let's start with uh how events over the weekend it wasn't york it's was more about what happened at the car yesterday the irish champion stakes obviously all sorts of clues there success days fascinating rock u.s army ranger that wasn't great was it at the car so how are paddy power betting now on irish champion stakes tom nugent so harzand is at the top of it now even money found is next in at fives alongside al manzer minding is six to one alongside fascinating rock then it's u.s army ranger and time tested eights and 12 to one the great gatsby success days 14s bar Tom Seagull, what do you make of US Army Ranger? A kind of explicably not particularly great run or a disastrous lack of franking of the classic form? Uh, neither, really. I think he's probably had a... I mean, we missed the Irish derby, so he obviously had an issue. I think he was just probably... You know, it's funny, those, but sometimes those horses, those three-year-olds that have done a lot earlier in the season, for not forget, he never ran last year. Had quite a lot of... You know, he got in the classic and then went straight to the derby. Then... Probably got slightly injured at Epsom, I would imagine, which is why I missed the Irish derby. Coming back, and it's hard for them. Uh, I was, I honestly wasn't expecting him to win yet, uh, yesterday. I thought he'd run better, though, so he's right on the watch list now. I wouldn't be, wouldn't be keen to back him in anything at the moment. Who would you back for that race right now? Uh, at those prices, mm. uh, obviously a lot of ground dependent, but I'm a big fan of time test. I think uh, eight to one, he's a big price, and I think the French horse is quite big too. I mean, he's. Uh, Unbeaten, I think. The winner of the French Derby, Al Mansour. He was impressive at Do- Deauville the other day. If it's fast ground, mile and a quarter, Harzand, I think we get beat, him beat at even money. It'll be between those two. What, see, what do you reckon? Yeah, I, I wouldn't be too downbeat about US Army Ranger for a start. I think he's probably trained quite hard earlier in the season to, to peak at Epsom. And, you know, I'd, I'd imagine Aidan Ryan just left him completely off since then, you know, with the autumn in mind. So it's just one of those races we see all the time from Aidan that, you know, the raw whip stakes, it, it wasn't about that for US Army Ranger. You'd want him to run a all. bit better, though, wouldn't you, Nick? Ideally, yes, but you know, Aiden afterwards said he's just ready to start back, and you know, I'd give him another chance. But if you're looking at it, the, the race now, I do like Albenzo. I like the French horse. Good at Dover last time. Good in the French Derby. Uh, I think he's a big player. And 
I love time test as well. I'm with Tom on that one, but there's something telling me there's just not this not his season this something year. Something will beat time test, won't it? You know, I mean, he missed it's... Ascot, which would have been perfect for him. He missed York, which I think he would have given postponed a good race because he had his ground up there. And, you know, the weather and a few little niggles here and there, it's just not his season this year. I think we're all mature enough to accept this isn't a vintage flat season, but it's going to be particularly unvintage if time test wins that. Right, that's my view. Let's have a look at the two-year-olds because there's certainly some hope that next year is going to be pretty star-studded, isn't it? It's some really good two-year-olds we've seen. Obviously, the, the mini Frankels are doing absolutely superbly. Uh, chaps, which juvenile has impressed you most over the last few days? Obviously, we've got Churchill, we've got Blue Point, we've got Rivet. Tom Siegel, who's your juicy juvenile? <sighs> Blimey, uh, wouldn't be Churchill. I mean, I think there's, there's, he's a very he's a high talking horse, isn't he? But he's just sort of a bit work, work, workman like for me at the moment. I thought Blue Point was really good. Uh, he's doubt he'll stay a mile though. So if we're looking at you know anti post, we're looking at him for maybe the race at Royal Ascot rather than the uh, thing Rivet. Yeah, he just won. You know, it was a very expensive maiden, but it was just a maiden of those. Blue Point, I think. I think it would be the one that would, would be the one I would be most looking forward to seeing next time. Why are Great. you neg on Churchill? Ah, it's just a bit he's just a he's just a horse at the moment for me. I mean he's he's winning four runner races and he's winning them okay. I'd, I was a bit disappointed with him at Ascot when all the hype was the it's gonna be the next big thing. The form's not brilliant from Ascot. You know, Kunko was and he's got he's got wiped out since, so I'm just a little bit lukewarm about him. He's one of those horses that could be very good, but I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I'd like to see Blue Point versus Caravaggio, that would be some race in the middle part. And what about, you can't mention, you've got to remember Lady Aurelia yesterday. What did you think of her, boys? Regressive. Nick? She stood in oh, the hole on, a couple of times, did she not? Frankie says, Frankie was interviewed last night and she stood in the hole twice and she lost her balance, he said now. Uh, and the ground did look a little bit poached, I thought. But uh, I suppose you have to take Frankie's word on it. Uh, I, I'm not going to be um, getting onto the mortgage broker to get involved with Lady Aurelia on any long-term basis myself. What about you, Watsi? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure there's much longevity to some of these Wesley Ward horses. Um, they're always trained to peak at Royal Ascot, and they looked fantastic there, but she didn't quite look the same, I didn't think. Oh, Come yeah. in, who did you like? Be positive. Oh, I, I, I thought Rhododendron. It was a little bit workmanlike at the curb, but I just think she's crying out for an extra furlong, and if you wanted one for the future, I'd, I'm sure they'll be looking at the Marcel Boussac for her on Arc Day. I think over another furlong, you see a really good filly. She just takes a while to wind up, and I'm sure a little bit further would help her. So... Rhododendron for me, not necessarily visually, but I, I think she's getting there and I think there's much more to come. Do you think she one. could... Got... Hang on a sec, I've got a, a pathetic joke here. Do you think she <laughs> could run at Newmarket next year then, uh, Nick? Rhododendron? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So they'd be looking yeah. to come yeah. past the bushes there. Yeah. Hey, very good. <laughs> Sorry, go on, Tom. <laughs> yeah, there's the, talking of the Marcel Boussac, you got, if you get a chance to have a look on the internet or search around, have a look at a horse called John Claude, Claude Rouget. It's called First of Spring. She's by Galileo out of Homecoming Queen who won the... 1,000 well guineas, bred. I think. She's beautifully bred. She's unbeaten in two starts. She was incredibly impressive at Deauville the other day. She's straight to the boo sack. She's really good. What's her name again? First of Spring. First of Spring. Put that in your horse tracker. We'll be back in a mo. Here's Paddy Power's latest horse racing offer. It's money back as a free bet if your horse finishes second to the SP5 at one meeting every day this month. Paddy Power, you're welcome. Max free bet, £25, 18+. plus. Please gamble responsibly. OK, let's talk ARC now. Postponed um, after a fraught summer. Missed a target or two. Came back and looked really, really good in the Judmont International. And presumably is very much to the fore in Paddy Power's ARC betting, Tom Nugent. Indeed. Uh, four to one at the top alongside Harazan. Uh, Minding is in there at seven to one. There's a, there's a bunch of them on 12s, including Found, Almanzar, Order of St. George, Le Cressonnier and Makahiki. And it's 16 oh, to one. beautifully bar. pronounced. That wasn't. It was dreadful. Have another go, Tom. <laughs> come on. Makahiki? That's it. Yeah, nailed it. All right. Come on in, Tom. We'll stick with you for the arc fancy. Me? No, we'll stick with you. So that's oh, Tom Nugent. Um, I would be taken on postponed anyway. Given the record of fillies in the race, I'd have a look at Minding. Like she's only been beaten twice into second in her life. Uh, seven to one is reasonably generous if she does show up. I suppose draw and all that is dependent. But uh, yeah, Minding. I might have a look at Minding. You're looking the at the wrong filly. La Cressonnier is the one, That's isn't it, Tom? The one. That's the one, Bruce. Absolutely brilliant filly she is. I can't wait to see her next. I think she and. Order of St. George, if it got soft, would be my two. Yeah, I'm agreeing with you. 
obviously your opinion carries far more weight than mine, but I'm very <laughs> pleased to hear that you're endorsing it. The only thing is, is there a slight problem with Order of St. George in so much as obviously he's going for the Irish legend next? Might they run him in that long distance race at Ascot rather than go for the Arts? It's possible, isn't it? It's very possible. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, it, it just depends how they want to go. They've got a lot of options, haven't they? They've got Idaho if you won the St. Ledger. They've got Seventh Heaven who won the Yorkshire. They've got Minding. They've got Found. So they've got lots of options. I think it'll be ground dependent for him. If it turned up a really wet arc, I think they'd be very tempted. And postponed for you, what, see, what do you think of postponed? Because, I mean, do you remember when he won the King George last year? Everyone was saying it's not that good a King George this year if postpones one. Now, 12 months on, he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Are we in danger of overrating this horse, or is he as good as everyone's saying? It, it's, it's funny. In, in the build up to York last week, every man and his dog, myself included, was keen, keen to take on postponed because he's back over a mile and two. He'd missed a race before and very and not in particularly good form. So the fact he got the job done. Uh, probably over a trip short of his best, says to me that he, he probably is, you know, up there with the best of them, I would say. Um, do I fancy him for the arc? No. Uh, you know, we've been banging on about it all summer, but order us and George. Come on, he, excellent. He won again <laughs> last weekend, like, albeit it was just a comeback race, but he's light years ahead of the other stairs at the moment. I think he could be, you know, do what Yates did or, or maybe more. And um, He's just got so much to offer this horse. I'm sure we'll win the Irish and Ledger easily. And then if he does that, then hopefully they'll find it hard to resist a trip to Paris. Excellent. Uh, not Paris, Dover. No, well, it's sort of Paris. It's mm. greater Paris, isn't it? No, it's Sean T. Sean T. Sean T. What am I about? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so more York reflections. And perhaps we ought to give a nod to the, the two guineas as well. Um, we're not particularly certain, I think, from talking earlier in the show, that we saw uh, either of the Guineas winners in action at York last weekend. But uh, perhaps you could give us a horse, Tom. Siegel, above all others, that you think is well worth following from what you saw last week on the Knaves, Meyer. <sighs> well, I like Seventh Heaven, Bruce. I mean, I know it's not Guineas related, but I thought she was really impressive. I think she's a massively big, strong filly. I don't think Aidan's going to overface her this year. I mean, having said that, she won the Irish Oaks and the, and the Yorkshire Oaks now. I'm not sure we, you know, we might not see her again this year, but I think she's going to be a really top class filly to be recommended in all the big races next year i'm a massive fan of hers big prize for the st ledger twilight payment was runner up to order of st george at the weekend uh, jim bulger's horse ran a really really good race i think got within the length and a half of uh, of the favorite um that was a really good run he's third in the uh queen's vase prior to that um, big eye catcher in that race he's really improving fast he's about 20 25 to 1 for uh, Doncaster. I'm pretty sure he's going to go, and I think he can. He'll start much shorter price than he is at the moment. Okay, Tom Nugent, do you have a ledger show? Uh, we do indeed. Uh, it's Idaho at the top at eleven to eight. Muntaha seven to one. Houses of Parliament tens alongside Red Verdon. Sword Fighter twelve to one and fourteens bar. Tom Siegel, any ledger views? Is Idaho too short, or is he a good thing? No, I think he's. I think he's. I think he's about right price, Bruce. At this stage, I mean, you don't want to. I don't. Not the type of person wants not to. Not your any, sort of price, is no, he? No, eleven to eight now. No, I mean eleven to eight on the day. I'd be. I'd be. I'd be looking at him. But uh, do you think he'll stay, Tom? That's my query. Uh, I think he will. Yeah, I remember. I remember after the after the derby, I uh, I was. I thought he would. He looked like he didn't stay. And I remember Aiden and Shamey getting <laughs> off, and Shamey saying that all he does is stay. This is a strong stay. We can't wait to get him up in trip. Watching that race yesterday, uh, last week, I thought he looked like a strong stay to me. I think he will stay. That is the doubt. Uh, to be honest, Muntaha was... Diff I say, yeah, he's a bit... He's just. N I was expecting more from him at Chester on Saturday. I know he was in a handy... I know he was taking on older horses, and I know he probably wasn't cherry ripe, but I was expecting... You know, that's not really classic winning for, for, for me. Um, I, I, I do I do endorse what Nick said there about that Jim Bolger horse. He's a strong stayer. He really caught the eye at Royal Ascot. You know, Houses of Parliament was uh, is around, and he wasn't far behind. I, you know, I think I think that puts him definitely in the place mix. Well, absolutely, because I mean, if you know, if you take it, the Order of St George has done his running. He's running an absolute cracker yeah, to, exactly. to, to give him so much to do. Exactly. Tom Nugent, who should we be filling our Racing Post horse tracker with, based on what we've seen in the last seven days? Uh, I think Heartbreak City still could be well handicapped, to be honest. Uh, I thought, like, like to be honest with you, Nemeralia was a class act. She's going to be short wherever she goes. Um, but that's it for me, really. Nemeralia but, was good, wasn't she? Tom yeah. Siegel, how good can she be? Yeah, she was good, wasn't she? I mean, she likes York, doesn't she? I mean, I'm, I'm back so beloved that day, that on, on uh, whenever it was Wednesday or something. And, I'm, you know, coming up the straight, I thought it was only a matter of how far he was going to win. And she shot by him. I think Danny Tudhope probably would, would have got going a bit sooner if he'd had his time again. But nonetheless, she shot by him very quickly. It's good form, that. Nemirali was uh, so beloved around well in the, in the uh, Sussex States. And he was only beaten four or five lengths. 
Okay. He's definitely Group 1 class. Last word goes to the star of the York Ebor Festival, Mecca's Angel, who was absolutely brilliant. We've already touched upon it, but let's see if she's worth having the absolute lot on in the Prix de la Bay at Chanty on uh, let me see, October the 2nd. Do you have prices yet, Tom, or should we have a little natter we first do, while you're digging them do, out? We do have them here. Uh, Mecca's Angel at the top, 5-4, to four, profitable next in at 8-1. to one. Gold Dream 12s alongside Marsha and Muthmere, 14-1. to one. Eastern Angel and the Tin Man and 16-1 to one bar. Tom Siegel, will the Shantia Abbey be as ground and draw dependent as the uh, long shot ones always seem to be? Flipping heck, Bruce. I'm not too up on the old Shanty draw stats as we speak, but... Uh, <laughs> Have thinking, a guess. Ab thinking about it, I don't think it'll be anything like as bad as the uh, what we have seen at uh, uh, Longchamp. Longchamp over the years. Uh, thinking about Deauville up the straight there. Yeah, no, um, it can be. It can be. In years gone by, the, uh, pr uh, the thinking back to the uh, race Muharra one, the De Geest or whatever it was, that's up the straight track there. There can be a draw advantage. Sometimes it's up the middle. Uh, as we, you know, we remember thinking back to the uh, the it's Chanty, isn't it? Thinking back to the Guineas where there was a big draw advantage that day when the Gurkha won. So it can be, but at this stage, I mean, we, we don't know. But look, she's brilliant. And if she turns up and runs anything like, she can probably run a second slower than she did at York and she'd still win. So are you saying five to four is value or should we wait and see? Well, is she, is she, you know, if it's very fast ground, will she run? You know, I don't think back in any horse that the connections um and are about whether she's going to run is worth backing at five to four. I'd rather back her at four to five on the day. And also, surely she, she'll get her ground at the 2nd of October, well, you think surely. so, but, be, you know, a lot of years we go there thinking it's going to be soft ground it, for the arc, and it isn't. There's been quite a few, you know, two or three fast ground arcs in the last 10, so... But as long as it's not unsafe, exactly. she'll run, won't she? I would have thought so, but she didn't last year, did she? When we all thought she was going to. I mean, that was, you've got to remember, it was a big um and last year, which is she going to run in the, in the Abbey, and she didn't, so, you know... What do we do, Nick? Do we get stuck in now or wait to make sure the going is right? And also, don't forget, on the day, the bookmakers tend to have exactly. a nice big war with each other to be the biggest prize. So probably hold fire, would you think? Yeah, I'd say so. She's missed so many races over the last couple of seasons because the things haven't been quite right for her. So she's not an ideal anti-post uh, you know, pick at this stage. But obviously, if she turns up, um, you know, she's, she's not an unbeatable. Um, you know, she's just a, an amazing horse, and we got her ground preferences all wrong. We, you know, in the past we all thought she was a mudlark, but um, Michael Dodds and the owner say no, she's not that at all. She just needs to, just to take the edge off a little bit, and that's why that that little bit of rain on fr on Friday was absolutely perfect for her. Well, you say that, but I mean, it's, I think Jim McGraw on Channel Four is making the point that they had, I think, two mils of rain, but they would have put three mils on anyway, which they didn't do. So I think it probably would have been fine anyway. Anyway, it was a good week at York. Desperate week for the bookies, good week for punters, which makes it even better. And incredibly, like I say, William Darby, who runs York, will be amazed to know that Tom <laughs> Seal gave it his seal of approval. So a fantastic week. We've got some good racing coming up. Join us on Friday for our postcast when we're looking ahead to Goodwood, Newmarket and the Curra. And don't forget as well, every Thursday we have a weekly football postcast as well. So do try and join us for that. Thanks very much indeed for listening. The Race and Post cast in association with Paddy Power, they prize support UK and Irish race in the night before.